Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be dissertating and talking about the natal chart of LeBron James. Many of you may have heard of him, at least in my opinion, I believe he's unequivocally the best uh, player in the National Basketball Association, otherwise known as the NBA. And first thing I want to talk about, okay, his son is in Capricorn. And with the sun in Capricorn, I think this shows his ambitious side, his industrious uh, side, his good hard work ethic, his diligence. The fact that he was very uh, mature when he came into the NBA, he showed very good responsibility, very disciplined. I think he scored like 25 points on the first game he ever played. And not only did he live up to expectations, in my opinion at least, he superseded them. Now he has the moon in Aries. Now moon in Aries shows that side, I think that assertive, aggressive nature, the, the outspoken side that comes out. And someone had asked him a question one time uh, about, I, I think it was connected with, uh, why do you feel confident you can win game six in the uh, NBA finals, uh, this past NBA finals? And he said, uh, because I'm the best basketball player in the world and that's uh, also connected I think with his blunt and outspoken Mercury and Sagittarius so that plays a role in that as well. Now his rising sign is Gemini and Gemini is a sign that could be very versatile, multifaceted. I think he, it comes out when, when we watch him play on the floor he's uh, very quick-witted. He, there was an article in Sports Illustrated which was entitled uh, The Unique uh, Ubiquity of LeBron James because he could play pretty much any uh, position and I believe he has. And that versatility is strongly connected with Gemini and, and very in the eloquence, the good communication uh, skills, his ability to be adaptable uh, to other, to various players around him. I think that's very strongly connected with his Gemini ascendant. Now he has a good balance of introversion and extroversion because he has six of his 10 planets are in uh, above the horizon but he has seven of the 12 major influences. And when I say major influences, I'm talking about the planets and uh, the MC and the Ascendant. Our, uh, seven of the 12 are in feminine signs. So there is a pretty much a close to a 50-50 split between the introversion, extroversion, and optimism, pessimism, and objectiveness, and being subjective. So. Uh, majority of his planets are in water signs, and including the major influences, of course, he has them, MC, uh, including the MC Ascendant. The MC is in Pisces, and he has uh, also has a number of planets in, in water signs. And in that, um, this can indicate strong emotionality, sensitivity. Uh, it could show that LeBron. Um, utilizes his insight a lot more than maybe we we really uh, recognize and it, it could give certain uh, ability to, to make decisions based on uh, intuitive hunches often. Now he also has a uh, proponents of, of the major influences and in mutable signs and this though can, can indicate strong fluctuation and vacillation it also can show strong adaptability I call it mutability be mutable signs so an ability to go with the flow and be adaptable and I think that comes out strongly in LeBron's uh, nature now he has um, as far as uh, his chart signature goes that comes to Pisces and the Pisces chart signature is supposed to give the chart signature in a horoscope is supposed to give like an overall tone or feel in the chart but I, I say it, I don't believe it supersedes the impact or influence of the sun, moon, or ascendant. But a Pisces signature can give somebody um, strong idealism, strong sensitivity, compassion, uh, and imagination. On the negative side, it could give some kind of ambivalence. The person may be somewhat nebulous, and it may uh, attract sometimes the wrong people into per a person's life, people that might be... Uh, associated with drugs and alcohol. I don't know if that's true or not as far as people he's ever attracted in his life, but on the negative side it can it can do that. Now 
also he has it in his chart pattern i didn't really see a chart pattern but the closest it was to it looked like a bowl uh, and when someone has a, a bowl pattern or, or close in this case not far from a bowl pattern because it, i don't think it met the parameters for it but uh, it could show that somebody has a lot of focus and could be self-contained and they can somewhat be engrossed in their own in kind of their own i guess you could say their realm and generally won't allow extraneous or outside influences to impact them so i, th I think you see the capricorn energy and you also have this uh, this bold pattern which shows that lebron can have a lot of that single-minded focus i believe and he has the chart ruler in his sixth house and somebody that has the chart ruler in the sixth house it can often be one or the other you could either see a person that is very strongly infatuated with work with employment with service can be a very hard laborious worker or somebody that could be the antithesis of this in some cases and might have i guess we can call work aversion and I think that the, the former is more apropos for LeBron James because I think anybody that watches him, he's very diligent on the court. He has a very strong, hard work ethic. And I think that really, that's something that we really see. And that's where the Gemini rising energy is, is strongly uh, injected into, and it's into his, his work um, habit. And it, this could also indicate that since the Gemini rising comes out in this, that there might be a point in his life where he may work um, in manifold um, jobs sometimes at, at, at maybe at one time. Now, he has uh, most of his planets are in the second and third quadrant of his horoscope. So having this, uh, what tells me too is he has, he has the first quadrant in his horoscope empty. And what this indicates to me is that anyone that feels that LeBron James may be about self-aggrandizement or being egocentric is really, based on his chart, he actually, it shows to me that he's more about other people. And the, the second uh, quadrant shows that he could be strongly connected as far as his um, his home and his, his um, as, far, as far as his home life, uh, fifth house being things of a creative nature his children and and the the sixth house is the employment and it shows to me that he's the kind of person that can work very hard and laboriously to to support um, his children and take care of his home now he also had it's a he has the same amount of planets in his third quadrant and that shows me that he's also strongly about like partnerships, relationships, about other people. And uh, this may fa fig uh, figure prominently in his life scheme. And it could also show that um, the eighth house being about transformation, the ninth house philosophy, it could show that it, a lot of this has, it, he can be strongly about transformation of philosophy, perhaps but perhaps through relationships as well, since the seventh house, of course, is in that mix. Now, he has most of his planets on the right side of his horoscope. He has eight of ten there. So that tells me that he's very, could be strongly uh, connected uh, with others and may like to do things with others uh, more so than doing things in solitude or by himself. It indicates more that it could show a little bit more of a dependency is a, uh, being dependent a little bit more as opposed to being self-reliant and independent but i think what it is with lebron is that he just likes to do things collectively with others and it shows i think it comes out in the fact that he's a very strong team player and about the team uh, concept when he plays basketball now another thing i thought was interesting is that he has no uh, retrograde planets and somebody that has no retrograde planets could often uh, have a little, it, it gives a little ease and ability for as far as attainments and accomplishments. And there might be, not, maybe it's part of the reason why he was able to join the NBA at such an early age and has really flourished and thrived ever since. And with little, in a, with little thing, anything, not many things really inhibiting his progress or, or any obstructions in his way on his road to success, 
And a lot of this, I think, may have been attributed to having no planets in a retrograde uh, sign. So that's something uh, to consider. Now, another thing I think is interesting with uh, LeBron James is he has um, he has a stellium uh, in his horoscope with uh, Venus in Aquarius. It's out of sign stellium. Venus in Aquarius uh, conjunct Pisces MC. Pisces MC conjuncts Mars in Pisces. Now, I think it, with this, in, in, to sum, summarize it, it can give a strong ability to incorporate uh, money, which is Venus, uh, the career, which is the MC, and also the athleticism, which is Mars, into a unifying uh, purpose. Venus and Aquarius can give a strong love for group involvement, and Pisces MC can show a lot of um, idealism and sensitivity in, uh, in their career matters and be very idealistic in what they're trying to accomplish as far as that goes. Now, the Mars and Pisces may have some wavering or vacillating uh, energy, and at times uh, on the negative side, it shows where one could be maybe sh have an exorbitant amount of energy one moment, but then show maybe go stagnant the next. So there just has to, the the one negative on the, on the stellium is that, and also. Uh, but what modifies this, though, is that Mars, in, it may be in Pisces, but it's also in the 10th house in his natal chart, which is, uh, as many of you know, that is an accidental uh, dignity. So that shows the uh, connected with his ambitious and industrious side and putting that energy strongly into career matters. And the conjunction from Mars to the MC, I believe, reaffirms that. Now, an interesting... Um, well, LeBron James is a very, I think, intriguing uh, yod configuration in his natal chart. Well, I call it a weak yod because the Jupiter in conjunct his Gemini ascendant, which is part of this yod configuration, is falls slight, just a little bit over what I would say that five degree orb, but a, but a weak yod I would consider. Now, the yod in, in his chart is the Gemini ascendant at the apex point. And he has uh, Jupiter and Saturn making a sextile to each other. Jupiter and, and Saturn in conjunct Gemini Ascendant, which, as I stated before, is that action point or apex point of the Yod configuration. Now, having a Jupiter sextile uh, Saturn, this could indicate uh, a person that is able to realize um, that he can, he or she, well, in this case, he, of course, can uh, can work hard, laboriously, be very industrious, and and, and and show have discipline, working very methodically, being systematic, in order to generate perhaps uh, their own luck. And when I so that is the positive in this. Now, with um, the the inconjuncts to the ascendant come from. Uh, Saturn and Jupiter, and if one in the yacht configuration can work through this tension associated with the inconjuncts, it could lead to uh, some profound accomplishment or achievement uh, for this person. Now, having Jupiter in conjunct the ascendant, it could indicate somebody that might at times be uh, a little bit maybe have a, a little exorbitant amount of confidence, maybe a little bit too much, and it, it can um, it could also be somebody that might feel a little bit overworked and, and may uh, expend more than, than the normal amount of energy doing so. Now Saturn, in conjunct the Ascendant, could indicate somebody that may be overwhelmed perhaps with some uh, responsibility and it, it could indicate that maybe it, by in because of this perhaps it might show certain despondency in the person's uh, in the person's nature in that that outer demeanor which is the um which is the ascendant now it might it could also indicate sometimes an overly pessimistic outlook so you have kind of the the it's a little bit of a contradiction he has that that maybe that overly um I guess you could say confident or optimistic outlook connected with the Jupiter in conjunct the Ascendant, but then he might have the opposite with the Saturn in conjunct the Ascendant. But 
what what this does is having those inconjuncts uh, that's that's the point of tension and exasperation in the odd configuration however Gemini ascendant that's the apex point in this and that could be the way where the person takes that action and can work through this and incorporate the positive qualities of Jupiter and Saturn into the Gemini ascendant well Gemini ascendant is about being uh, could be versatile, multifaceted, have good powers of communication. And perhaps, I think with LeBron James, what, what happens is, is that LeBron James in the latter part of his, uh, the latter part of his career has become more of a facilitator, somebody that can pass the ball effectively, not just have to rely on just dominating through, uh, through just his offense alone, just by scoring. And by doing so, I think that he this is a way where he can uh, alleviate perhaps the, the the negativity of the inconjuncts the Jupiter in conjunct the ascendant being perhaps uh, overworked uh, to some degree and and you look at the uh, Saturn uh, in conjunct the ascendant might be maybe a little bit overwhelmed with the responsibility and by being more of a facilitator and getting his teammates involved in the game more I think this somehow this can alleviate perhaps the negativity and, uh, and, and not have to expend a, as much energy or be or, or be burdened with um, surfight of responsibilities which can show or or, or being or, or which can reflect in, in maybe being a little bit I guess you could say somewhat uh, despondent because of this and I think that the Gemini rising being the apex point is that action point is being is showing the versatility in being multifaceted on the court being showing more just overall ability from every every facet every angle and I think that's what that's really that that point of action um, for LeBron James and I think that does help help, um, help I guess you could say help alleviate the, the negativity of those inconjuncts to the ascendant and but and he can also comb uh, incorporate the positive with Jupiter and Saturn into this as well the discipline with Saturn and in the expansiveness and, and perhaps sport, uh, the sports, um, I guess you could say the affinity for sports, perhaps uh, put, put that balance of the exuberance with Jupiter and expansiveness with the discipline and seriousness of Saturn into the equation. And, so, and, and it comes out, I think, um, and, and this could come out strongly uh, through, I guess we could say, the apex point in Gemini rising in his natal chart. Well, anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for LeBron James' natal chart. And stay tuned next time where I will be continuing my series on the signs on the house cusps. So anyway, two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel, but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart, and not just one. Until next time, people, stay well.